Hello everyone. So today we're just going to continue on coding our uh, comment section by building the server with Node.js. Um, so essentially we're going to serve this web page up with our, our server. So if you haven't already, you're going to have to install Node.js. And at this time, I installed the recommended for most users. Um, if you've already installed it, great. If you haven't, a wizard opens up and you just follow the defaults. It's uh, super simple and once you've done that we can just jump right into the code so this is the code from where we left off last time and if you're in Visual Studio Code you can open up the integrated terminal and I'll just clear what I've been doing there okay and so essentially our first step is we've already installed node but now we need to initialize sort of a new node project turn this project we're doing into a node project so we can use the npm which is the node package manager if you're familiar with python it's similar to like pip installing things and essentially we're just going to install node into our project here and it's just going to get started and as you can see at the top left here a folder just got added and i believe a, a json file will be added too yep and there we go we're all done just like that. So now we can create our new file. We can call it server.js, and this is going to be our server essentially. And we're going to have to include or require a couple of things. So HTTP, we're going to just give it a name and we'll require uh, first things first, HTTP, the hypertext transfer protocol. And I made a video, a little video about the HTTP. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about what, what's going on there check it out and we're also going to include the file uh, system I believe that's what FS stands for <laughs> uh, and if you're kind of wondering where I'm getting this from node.js has uh, some good documentation if you go to docs and guides and getting started uh, this is essentially what we're starting with here it's going to be a little different but uh, if you want to copy and paste this code you can totally do that if you want to follow along with me you can do that as well so once we've done this, we're going to create a constant for the host name, and that's going to equal uh, localhost. So that IP address for that is 127.0.0.1. If you are, if this computer, if you're like going to set this server up on a different computer on your local network, you can just find your IP address with ipconfig and put that uh, IP address into there as well. But since we're doing it on our local machine, We'll keep it to the local host. And we'll just use port 3000 for this project. And then we'll create the server. And that's going to use the method create server from HTTP. And essentially all we have to do here is we're going to have the request and response. So that again is in the hypertext transfer protocol has a request and response cycle. Yeah, so those are those two uh, things right there. And, you know, I think, um, yeah, that should be right. And actually, you know what, we can just take a look here. I'm just going to copy and paste. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, see, I thought there should be two uh, curly braces there. Yeah. So, essentially, we'll just add that in there. Okay, and go like this, and yeah, we need to close close that off as well. Okay, there we go. So essentially, now we can create uh, some paths for um, what URL path is going to serve up what HTML page. Now, usually in this sort of situation, you could use a framework like Express. Um, to kind of ha handle this for you. You can use, you know, with things like the MVC Model View Controller. Uh, for this tutorial, I'm going to stick with just pure Node.js uh, just to kind of get a better feel for it and kind of understanding of how it works. But, you know, in the future, I might make, you know, tutorials using Express and stuff. And that, that's probably the best way to go about it. But uh, just to look, get more familiar with Node, I'm, I'm going to go and just build it with Node for now. So in order to get started, we're going to say if the request dot method is equal to 
a get request and the request.url is equal to just a forward slash and that's just going to be essentially this right uh, well we can change this to the 127.0.0.1 and then this would look uh, slash will be the default page right because we don't have anything else after this slash we could if we had other pages to this website we could have like an about page or a contact page and we could put those after but just because we want this to open directly to uh, our main page we'll just leave it with just the forward slash like that and then we will respond because if that's the request method we're going to uh, send a response so we'll send a, a status code of 200. Sorry, equals 200. And then we will uh, send a uh, set header in the response. And we're going to uh, set that to content type. And this is going to be text, oops, slash HTML. And I just want to make sure, yeah, okay, good. And so in this example here, they're just sending plain text, um, hello world. But we're going to actually send the HTML. So in order to do that, we're going to use the file system um, library that we included or required. And we're going to create a read stream. So it's going to essentially read this file. And what file do we want to read? Well, we're going to put that in quotations. Uh, it's the index.html page, like so. And essentially, once we've read that file, we want to pipe that file in the response. So uh, we will pipe that file in the response and this is going to be all happening in the response so that will once we type uh, this into the URL um, it will send back in the response our index.html page so we have to do one more thing uh, in here but before we get around to that we will make sure that the server is actually going to listen on the port and the host name which we set to 3000 and 127.0.0.1 uh, yep okay and i'm missing the curly brackets here and i'm missing the semicolon and then we're just going to write ourselves a little log message uh, to let ourselves know that the server is actually running. And in JavaScript, there's sort of a new way to concatenate in variables to strings. Uh, so we can just, I'll show you that now. You can do a dollar sign and then curly braces. Essentially, you can put in whatever variable it is that you want to include in this string, which is the host name, which is right up here. And that's going to be colon. And then we can put another dollar sign and 3000 uh, or not 3000 we can put the actual port there which is 3000 so essentially that's just going to let us know in our console that the server is actually running so if we save this and we open up our console again here and we type in node because it's a node project and server.js we'll see that it says server running at and we put in our location right here so we now we know the server is on and listening at port 3000. So if we go back here and type in uh, to our URL 127.0.0.1 colon 3000, we should get a response of the HTML uh, file. So here we go. Yes. So this, uh, I thought this might happen and this may be a good good sort of uh, learning moment here. Uh, if we open up developer tools, and I will just take us out of 
mobile mode and dock this down here and we go to the network if we attempt to refresh this again right so so as you can see it loaded up without any of the styles and, and uh, that we implemented so just to show you what's happening if we try to refresh this and we look at the network I'm just going to scroll that down uh, you can see that the custom style sheet here is pending so if we stop it it'll load up without it and see that we, we canceled the custom style sheet uh, loading up and the reason this is happening is because since we're not using a framework or something we have to actually code in all of our paths sort of manually at least that's what I think is going on uh, so we can add another else statement here else if and we can say the request method if the request method is equal to get again because it's going to be a get and if this doesn't make sense it'll start to make sense after we've kind of done this and we'll add in the request.url and we'll set that equal to so now we have to manually include our mm, style sheet which is in which we know is in our styles folder slash uh, what do we call it again up here custom style so custom styles.css so essentially what we're doing here is manually uh, adding in the path to the style sheet and you might be wondering how come the bootstrap loaded okay uh, the reason the bootstrap loaded okay is because we connected through the internet to the bootstrap and not to a local file sheet uh, file like this CSS one here uh, so again essentially this we're going to copy and paste this down here because it's going to be pretty much identical except this is not HTML this is going to be CSS that we're sending and this file is going to be different we're actually going to go into the styles folder and then grab the custom styles sheet and pipe that in the response so we'll save that and so again so essentially what happened here is we sent this request right and our server was listening on port 3000 and we sent a request to 127.0.0.1 port 3000 which we set up here and our server was like uh yep i'm listening there i i'm getting your request and it looks into the uh, this method here because server.listen is from here and it's like okay was the method a get yes it was a get and actually we can see that that was happening here if we click on this one uh, here's the request url 127.0.0.1 and it was a get method see the request method is get okay so this uh oh, sorry this evaluates to true in this conditional statement and is the request url just a forward slash and as you can see here it is yes it is just a forward slash so this conditional if statement evaluated to true so we go and run this if block so in the response we send a status code 200 which you can see uh, in the response headers um oh well here's the status code it's uh 200 okay we should be able to see that uh okay that's the html uh so anyway there's the 200 response and we said that the content type was going to be text html which as we can see that here and you can view the source and yeah there's the 200 okay status right there if we view source that's what i was looking for and then we send the index file and that's in the response and we can see here's the text file now what happened when we loaded this up is that it attempted to call uh well first it called the bootstrap which it got because it goes through the internet to grab that and then it tried to call this uh this style sheet the styles uh, slash custom styles and it's like okay so before we had coded this portion this didn't exist yet so again the server was listening it got another request href or style slash customs uh, and actually if we go and we click here you can see it attempted to go to styles and custom style sheet and it was just waiting forever and it never got a response because we didn't code it in yet but now that we have and we've saved it um, we should be able to refresh this 
And oh yeah, so right. So what's happening here is we, once we made a change to the server, we have to restart our server. So we can stop our server by hitting Control and the C, and then we'll just restart the server again. So it's running again, and we'll refresh this. And uh, okay, so it looks like it's not loading again. So why, why is it not seeing the style sheet? Did I have a typo somewhere? Okay, so yeah, it turns out uh, I have a little bit of a typo here. Forgot the slash right there in front of it. So if we save this and we'll stop and start the server again, and we go back here uh, and we'll just type in the one, two, so actually we can also type in localhost. So we'll just type in localhost. And uh, just to show you that that's the same thing, 127.0.0.1 colon 3000 also takes us to the same page as well. So essentially, as we were mentioning before, uh, if we look at the network and refresh this now, uh, you'll see that the custom style is loaded right away here as well. It's not pending. And what I had forgotten was this slash uh, right before, right there. So that's sort of important. And yeah, as you can see in response, we got the CSS this time rather than the HTML. So, and there's the CSS that we had made. So there we go. Essentially now we have a, a server that's functioning with Node.js. It loads up both the style sheet and the index.html page. Um, if you like this content, then please like and subscribe. In the next videos, we're going to start uh, hooking up the server with the MySQL or MariaDB, the database, which is where we'll store the comments. And we'll use Ajax to populate um, uh, populate the comments up, up here in the comment section.